Wonder Woman is pretty much the most famous female superhero that there is on the planet, and so far in the DCEU, she actually has the best film track record. Now, this video was actually requested by one of my Patreons, named Zubea, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and apologies if I'm not. But since he is a Patreon of mine, I kinda have to do what he says. So with that being said, let's cover the gods in Wonder Woman Rebirth. Now, back in the New 52 comics, the Greek pantheon of gods featured pretty heavily in Wonder Woman's story. She frequently interacted with pretty much all of them, even killing Ares and becoming the god of war at one point. And then when he returned from the grave, she gave him back his title and became the goddess of truth. But all that changed when Rebirth happened in the DC Comics. In this new version of history, the gods are referred to as patrons and they don't really interact with humans or Amazons. With that being said, there are of course a few times when they do intervene with humans and Amazons, such as when Wonder Woman chose to leave Paradise Island and come to Man's World. And when she did, her patrons did appear to her in the forms of their sacred animals, and they gave her her superpowers to help her on her journey. And of course, she is half god, as Zeus is Wonder Woman's father, so in some respects they may have just awakened the power that already lay inside of her. But in any case, the gods don't interfere much, as most of the Greek pantheon is now no longer on Earth. But two of the gods, Phobos, the god of fear, and Deimos, the god of panic, are still very much on Earth, and they are in search of their father Ares, as they want to take his power for their own. But they can't find him, as he is imprisoned on Paradise Island, and no one can reach Paradise Island, including Wonder Woman. Now you may think that Wonder Woman has been to Paradise Island several times, but unfortunately this has all been retconned in Rebirth. And as it turns out, Wonder Woman has never returned to Paradise Island. When she has gone there in the past, it has been to a fake island with fake Amazons. Or it may have been a memory spell, it's not really made clear to be honest. But the point is, in the Rebirth comics, she has never returned to Paradise Island since she left it. And all the times that she thinks she has gone there have just been magic interfering with her mind. But in any case, the twin gods of fear and panic appear as Ares, and they try to extract the location from both Wonder Woman's mind, and then when that fails, Steve Trevor's mind. But they can't get the information from his mind either. But following some manipulation of mortals, such as manipulating a very wealthy woman with a lot of technology at her disposal, they are eventually able to go to Paradise Island, along with Wonder Woman. Or they can at least go to the part of Paradise Island that Ares is imprisoned in, as it's revealed that the whole point of the Amazons and the whole point of Paradise Island is to be a prison for Ares. You see, Ares was once consumed by the mad war rage inside of him, and he let this out in madness going to war on the entire world, and all he seemed to want was to watch the whole world burn. But using chains made by Hephaestus, Aphrodite, Ares' true love, is able to calm this store of rage inside Ares and finally give him peace. And although it's the chains that are physically doing this, it's actually the love that came from Aphrodite that is able to keep this power at bay. But the gods were scared of what would happen if the war rage inside Ares ever got out again, or if the power was taken by someone else, such as his sons. Because if the power was ever released, then there would be a war unlike any other war seen in history, and it would rage across the earth forever, pretty much destroying the planet, or at least killing everything on the planet. So the gods made a prison for Ares on Paradise Island, and the Amazons were put there to be the guards and wardens, and they were made immortal so that they could safeguard Ares for all of time. This is also the reason why no one can return to the island once they've left it, including Wonder Woman. It's to make sure that no one can access the prison. Although as I've said, Ares' sons do eventually manage to get through to Ares' prison in an attempt to steal his power. But they find that Wonder Woman is there waiting for them, and she is able to use her love, combined with her lasso, to chain them up and imprison them in much the same way as Ares is imprisoned. So the prison now holds Ares and his two sons, Phobos and Deimos and thus Ares' power is once again safely locked away. And it's important to note that Ares doesn't actually want to be freed, he wants to stay imprisoned, because it gives him peace that he can't have without the chains, and he doesn't want to lose control of his power and be lost in the rage of war again. And it's also worth noting that very few people seem to know of Paradise Island's true purpose. Wonder Woman had no idea this was why Paradise Island was there, and it's not revealed if the rest of the Amazons know, but it is quite possible that the Amazons don't know the real purpose, and maybe even Queen Apollyta doesn't actually know why they're there. Although since she is their leader, and was once a lover of Zeus, she most likely does know the real reason. And other than this instance in the comics, the only other important event so far with the Greek gods has occurred with the children of Zeus. As those of you familiar with Greek gods will know, in the legends, gods pretty much spend all their time sleeping with mortals and having lots of children. 
some of which have superpowers and some of which are immortal, such as Hercules and Perseus, who both still walk the earth, until they meet Grail, the daughter of Darkseid. In this story arc, Darkseid is still reincarnated as a baby, following on from the story of the Darkseid War, and Grail is trying to age him and return him to full power, because she is now, for some reason that's never explained, on Darkseid's side and follows his orders to the letter. So Grail hunts down the children of Zeus and feeds their essence to Darkseid, which is slowly returning him to adulthood and full power. But when she kills Hercules, Hercules' lawyer then reveals that in his will he left everything to his half-sister, Wonder Woman. And in Hercules' mansion she is able to find the location of her twin brother, Jason. For those who don't know, Wonder Woman had a twin brother named Jason, who was taken from the Amazon island when he was born, because men aren't allowed to exist on the Amazon island, and he has been living in the mortal realm ever since. And Wonder Woman only recently found out about his existence, but she has been searching for him, but until now she's been unable to find him. And it's revealed that Jason has pretty similar powers to Wonder Woman, although he may not actually be as strong, but he also has other powers, including manipulating the wind and the air, and through controlling the wind he can control the sea. And he actually turns against Wonder Woman at first, siding with Grail, though eventually he turns again and joins the fire of his sister. This is partly because of his love for his sister, and also partly because he was unaware that the people Grail had been hunting were actually dying. He thought they were just taking their power. Though to be honest with you, I think Eva's pretty bad, so I don't really count that as a good action. And at this point, it's revealed that Hercules' lawyer, who gave Hercules' will to Wonder Woman, is in fact her father, Zeus. And though it seems like it's meant to be a twist, to be honest, I thought this was a bit obvious when I read the story. But Zeus is there to stop Darkseid. Now, normally he doesn't interfere and leaves his children alone, as he gives them freedom and free will to make their own decisions. But killing a dozen plus of his children finally gets his attention. So he and Darkseid fight, and at first Zeus is winning, but then it's revealed that this was Darkseid's plan all along. Darkseid didn't care about Zeus's children, he wanted Zeus himself, as Zeus's power is enough to restore Darkseid to his full power. And so as the fight has been going on, although Zeus thought he was winning, Darkseid was actually slowly draining his power and weakening him, until the point when he can take all his power inside of him, effectively killing Zeus. And then at this point the Justice League arrive on the scene, and rather than have a confrontation with them, Darkseid decides to leave, as he has everything he wants, and fighting them would gain him nothing. And although Darkseid is returned to full power, later on in the comic book arc, Wonder Woman is actually able to defeat Darkseid, and she's also able to free the power and spirits of Zeus and his children, effectively freeing her father and all of her half-brothers and sisters. And though they all still appear to be dead, it is possible they will appear in the future comics, perhaps being reincarnated. Now apart from these two instances, the gods don't really get involved as much. Although after this, Jason is abducted for a week, and when he returns he has a suit of armour that gives him access to all of the powers of the Greek god's pantheon. He can access the speed of Hermes, the wisdom of Athena, the lightning bolts of Zeus, and so on with all of the different Greek gods. But he can only use these powers one at a time. Jason doesn't know where he went for this week as the memories have been taken, so he has no idea who gave him the suit of armour but eventually he's able to talk to the Fates to find out where he came from. And the Fates reveal that the suit was made by Zeus and intended for his sister, Wonder Woman, as a weapon to help her in her darkest hour. But since Zeus is dead, and the other gods being quite old-fashioned in their thinking, they instead decide to give the armour to the male heir. Except for Hera, who just wants to mess with Jason. Hera famously hates all of Zeus's children, and since she is Zeus's wife, this is kind of understandable though really she should be mad at Zeus, not his kids. But in any case, the gods gave the suit to him and it bonded to him body and soul, meaning that only he can use it from then on. So even though he does actually want to give it to his sister, as he thinks Wonder Woman's a far better hero than he could ever be, he can't, because it will only work for him. And soon after this, he learns that the Dark Gods have arrived on Earth. The Dark Gods were summoned from the Dark Multiverse during the events of Dark Knight's Metal, when Wonder Woman made a wish for the gods to return. Unfortunately, she didn't specify which gods. She meant the Greek ones, of course, but instead these evil gods have arrived. And they want to destroy and reshape the world and decimate the world's population so it looks like their home planet. And they're even able to absorb all of the heroes of Earth, and this of course increases their powers. All except for Wonder Woman, who they are unable to absorb. Since she was the one who summoned them, this kind of makes her special, and she has more resistance to their powers, and kind of has an edge in a way to defeat them. 
But even so, there is only one way to defeat them, or at least only one way to defeat them that doesn't involve the whole planet being devastated. And that is for her brother Jason to merge with these gods so that through him they can access the Greek gods' powers and use this extra power to return them to their home dimension and planet. But of course, this means Jason has to go with them, leaving Wonder Woman all alone. And though Wonder Woman doesn't want him to go, Jason says that making sacrifices like this is what heroes do. And though they could still probably defeat these dark gods on their own, they then have to deal with the aftermath and the collateral damage, because the gods have already killed millions and millions of people. But since Jason has made a deal to give them his powers, they in turn are going to fix the planet they've destroyed and bring back to life all of those that they have killed. So this is literally the only way to save the planet. And it's actually quite impressive that he's able to make this sacrifice. And on that rather dour note, that is everything you need to know about the Rebirth Gods in the Rebirth Wonder Woman series. I actually think it's a bit of a shame that most of what happened to Wonder Woman in her New 52 series has been retconned out of existence, because her interactions with all the different Greek gods was actually pretty entertaining for the most part, and the New 50 redesigns of the gods was actually quite interesting. But what do you think? Is Rebirth an improvement to Wonder Woman's New 52 series? Or do you think this is a step down from Wonder Woman's New 52 series? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needlemass Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.